the Lord and the unknown. Oh, yes, Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name. Lord, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you, and there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, and there is no one else like you nobody nobody there is no one else like you Jehovah. there's no one there is no one else like you eh, you do mighty things you do glorious things you're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. And you do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Awesome. And you do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Oh Lord, our Lord, our excellence is your name. Your name is strength, your name is power, a strong tower. That keeps us safe. Oh Lord, oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name. Your name is strength, your name is power, your name is power. Oh Lord, a strong tower that makes me safe. So I'm crying, oh, oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. So we cry in our room. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name your name is strength your name is power a strong tower that makes me save oh lord oh lord our god 
How excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong tower that makes me safe. So I'm crying. Oh, oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. So we crying. Oh, oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody, nobody like you, Lord. Oh. oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord, nobody like you, Lord. So no foreign God can take your place. And no foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. It's you that I love. It's you that I love. And no foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. Is you that I love? Is you that I love? And no foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. It's you that I love. It's you that I love, oh Lord. I'm surrounded. Lord, I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by your grace and mercy. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by your love and mercy. I'm surrounded, oh Lord, I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded, and I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded. Cause no foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. And no foreign God can take your place. It's you that I love. It's you that I love, oh Lord. You are glorious, Father Lord. You're so glorious in your ways. Oh Lord, you're glorious. 
and you are glorious. You're so glorious in your ways. Father Lord, we give you all the glory. Mm. You are glorious. Brother, can we take that one more time, please? So glorious in your ways. Oh, Lord, we declare it. That you are glorious. You're so glorious in your ways hallelujah so hallelujah. we're singing you are glorious oh, yeah. hallelujah hallelujah thank hallelujah. you thank you brother tayo for the wonderful worship and bringing us into an atmosphere of praise and worship as we go into tonight's uh, bible study thank you very much um, everyone, welcome. I can imagine what uh, week it has been for majority of us. We've come to the end of it. And as we normally do, we come to gather to study the Bible and study the scriptures. And just it reminds me of the Berean Jews in Acts 17, that when they hear the word, they go back and reflect on it and ponder upon it. And it is, you know, the Bible describes them as more noble than other Jews uh, and other people people that heard the word because what they always did was go back so we thank you lord we thank you for this opportunity lord god to gather once again and study your word we give you praise we give you all adoration we invite you into this atmosphere lord god we invite the holy spirit into this gathering lord god heavenly father lord god we come humbly before you father lord god to hear from you more of you and less of us lord god all of you and less of me Lord God, all of you and less of us, Lord God, ever faithful Father, we come before you this night, Lord God. You that are true from age to age, Lord God, from time to time, your word remains the same. We gather tonight to hear from you, Lord, a word in season, a word in, that would impact of our lives, Lord God, a word that would illuminate our paths, Lord God, a word that would remove confusion from our plans, Lord God, a word that would bring Bring us closer to you, Lord God. We come before you humbly, Lord God, to feed at your feet, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we invite you into this meeting, Lord God. Reveal yourself even in more and more glory to us, Lord God, as we participate in tonight's fellowship and Bible study, Lord God. Reveal yourself in new ways, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for moments like this, Lord God. As individuals, we thank you. As families, we thank you. As households, we thank you as communities as a community we thank you lord god we thank you for this opportunity we do not take it for granted lord god as we come to you lord god to draw out of your living water lord god we open up our hearts lord god we come expectant lord god for a word in season lord god heavenly father we just thank you we give you all glory we give you all praise we give you all honor lord god we ask that you take full and absolute control lord god as we dive into your word lord god help our understanding lord god give us a spirit of understanding lord god that we may hear this word and apply it where necessary in our lives lord god all to your glory and to your power in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen 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 um good uh warm welcome to everyone uh that's joined uh the call thanks for making our time to to join in tonight's bible study um i think it's always a refreshing moment to you know we 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 come to service on sundays we attend the prayer meeting and you know this bible study is really about deep diving into what we've heard up then taking the word and seeing how do we apply this the the real meat of god's word how do we apply it into our lives into our moments into our families into our communities into the different areas of callings and marketplace that the lord has called us into so it's always a wonderful moment to you know really get close to 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 the word of god welcome once again um so tonight's uh, topic is tagged people and um, I'm sure if, if you're like me, you, you, you would hear that and see that and think, okay, 
this can be as wide as we want to make it, or it can be as, as deep as we want to go you know, into it. But I think God has a word for everyone and each one of us. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that at that point of need, at that point of intervention, this word that we're about to go into tonight by the mighty name of Jesus would be a transformative word. It would increase our understanding of the awesomeness and the unlimitedness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So um, the, 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 the heading scripture for tonight is Proverbs 17, 17. So that should be a very easy one to quickly get into and quickly open. And hopefully it's one of those uh, scriptures, you know, if you're, if you're like me, you, when you read the Bible and you, you know, you know that, okay, so King Solomon, son of King David, you know, a lot of Proverbs is, you know, if you're like me, you kind of think, how do I situate this? You know, because on one hand, you have, you know, the, the story of creation, Moses and the prophets and, and the priests that the laws were handed into, to, were handed to. You have salvation that, you know, came from Jesus Christ, you know, to redeem us from the curse that was put on the first Adam. And you have the New Testament that tells us, you know, the evolution of the church or the new church as we see it today. Where do you situate or how do you rightly situate Proverbs. So there's this proverb 1717 that, you know, right there tells us about, you know, people. But more often than not, if you if you read it, you might just read it and say, yes, like most of the proverbs, this makes sense. But what is God really saying? What is, you know, how do we, when the Bible says, you know, in, in 2 Timothy 3.16 that, all of scripture is from God and they serve specific purpose. They're there to teach, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. So all of it has certain, um, you know, they, they, they're there to make a, an impact and get us closer to kingdom, right? So when we, I'm going to start, I'll try and share my screen. So for people that, um, hold on. Let me see if I can get my screen up. As we go into tonight's word, bear with me. But whilst I'm doing that, please um, feel free to go into Proverbs 17, 7, and I would bring up my screen to share as well. Can someone give me a thumbs up if you see my screen and it's, um, is that a thumbs up? Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. It's great, 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 great. So um, Proverbs 17, 17, and I would read it using the um, NIV version. Most, most versions you see um, that talks about Proverbs 17, they, the, the, the message is more or less the same in any version you're using. And it says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity. What is God telling us in this, in this scripture? What is God, you know, what, 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 you know, when so King Solomon was penning this down, what, what was in God's heart and laid in King Solomon's heart to communicate through the scripture? I, I think in, um, to put them into categories, I, I think what the essence of this scripture was to point out the values of true friendship, relationship, and community in, in furtherance of kingdom purpose. So when I read the scripture that says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for a time of adversity, to me, all it is what it's, what some of the key elements that draws out of that draw out of this scripture, this well of knowledge and wisdom and spiritual insights is about the values of friendship, relationship, and community. And what does that mean? You know, if I take the scripture from its literal interpretation, 
it's saying to me that, you know, a friend or a true friend, let's clarify this. A true friend is always loving. That is one. But in the same verse, 17, it then talks about a brother. The scripture is not talking about two different people. It's talking about the same person. It's talking about the same person that is a friend at all times, in trying times and in easy times, and also the person that becomes a brother in times of adversity that is in unfavorable circumstances, right? So that is, you know, just providing some, some, some meat around what this, you know, what the scripture is really trying to tell us, right? And then the more I went into the scripture, I began to understand, you know, and, and God was laying this on my heart, that, you know what? Yes, I command you to, you know, in, 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 to, 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 you know, love the Lord your God, you know, with all your might, with all your strength. And the second law is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. However, there is a transitioning that happens in that second part of that law to love your neighbor as yourself, right? And what I think the scripture is telling us is the true test of loving your neighbor as yourself is the second part of that, of that verse, right? That says, and, and to me, it's saying true friendship and community and relationships is forged out of adversity. That is, in, in summary, a friend that loves at all times will ultimately become a brother that sticks around or a sister that sticks around when and during times of adversity. And there would always be times of adversity. Let's not, you know, let's not gloss over this. But the scripture is really pointing us to, you know what? When you read this and you say, yeah, but I do love at all, you know, I, I love. The question is, in times of adversity, have you transitioned to that level of sisterhood, of brotherhood, of community, of relationship that says when adversity comes, would you become a brother or a sister? And there would always be adversity. Transition itself by its nature entails change, right? And we need to agree that, you know, change in whatever form would create its own natural and spiritual and physical resistance. So what the scripture be, you know, so that we don't read it on the surface and say, okay, yes, I can tick, tick, I can tick both of it. It actually goes into a really um, deep exploration of what this text is telling us. Praise God. So put another way, what it's saying is without genuine and true friendship, it is not possible to have, you know, a brotherhood or a sisterhood or a community. And if you cannot have any of that, if you cannot have true friendship or true, you know, brotherhood or sisterhood, then you cannot even talk about a community. And therefore you cannot even stand in the times of adversity. So as we go into tonight's uh, study, I'd like to pose some questions out there. And the first questions are, or the first question is, are you a friend of God at all times, including times of adversity? Or are you only a friend of God when things are working right? And the second is just like it. So he hangs off the two, um, the two scriptures in, 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 in Mark 22 and, and Matthew about, you know, the first law is love your Lord as, you know, with all your strength and all your might. And the second is like it. This, so my second question is, are you a true friend and a genuine brother or sister to the people God has placed in your family and community? Before you tick Proverbs 17, 17 and say yes, yes to both, ask yourself, am I a friend of God at times when I do not feel like, when things are not working the way I think it should work? Or do I begin to seek other alternatives? And the second law, which is very much like the, sec the first, are you a true friend to the people in your family, in your community that God has placed you in during times of adversity and stress?
the Lord is asking me to ask yourselves and even myself those two questions as we go into the scripture. Because the essence of this Proverbs 17, 17 is really about three key pillars that transition from one to the other. And we're in a moment of transition in, 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 in the body. Those three moments are in terms of our personal relationships, personal relationships with each other, our partnerships with each other, and how we come together as a community that are pursuing God's purpose and his kingdom here on earth. So we have been talking about dominion, we've been talking about transition, and we've been talking about kingdom purposes and kingdom purpose um, severally over the last couple of years. And what this text is telling me, what the Holy Spirit is telling me is to achieve all of the goals of dominion, to achieve and realize all of the goals and benefits of transition, and to realize the benefits of kingdom, we must practice and treasure what Solomon is telling us in Proverbs 17, 17, about relationships, about partnerships, and about community, and about friendship. Our Lord and Savior, Christ himself, embodies all of these principles of friendship, of relationship, and of partnership. That is what Jesus Christ himself practically exhibited whilst he was here. John 2.10 tells us that whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there's no cause for stumbling. In 1 John 3.16, we know this. This is how we know. By this we know, Lord, that Christ himself laid down his life for each and every one of us on this call. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. So when we read Proverbs 17, 17, and it talks about a brother here in its non-gender terms as born for a time of adversity, are we that person? And to answer that, if you go further down in 1 John 3 to verse 18, I think, it talks about not love in word or in talk, but in deed and in truth. And that is the essence. That is how, you know, so when we're talking about the dominion, when we're talking about transition, when we're talking about expansion, and ultimately when we're talking about kingdom purposes, that is ultimately what it is to love people in deed and in truth. So I go back to my earlier question. Do we love people in times of adversity? And do we love God in times of adversity? Or only when it's the story, the agenda fits what we want it to be. Praise God. So I think the conversation, and I'm, I'm trying to be mindful of time as well. So the conversation then brings us into a, a scripture that um, I would really like us to even deal, you know. So taking Proverbs 17, 17, you know, because we know that all of scripture from Genesis to Revelation as bookends, all of it is from God. So Proverbs 17, 17 now takes me into what I think is really the message for tonight. And I would ask that we go to 2 Samuel 10, 11 to 12. So 2 Samuel chapter 10, 11 to 12. I'll give a few seconds for people to, 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 to get onto to, to that um, scripture. And I would also bring it up here on screen for people that are following. Praise God. So, um, 2 Samuel 10, 11 to 12, I'm using the NIV version. And now I get into tonight's um, Bible study proper. But this is building on Proverbs 17, 17. So we're not, we're not getting lost. Just hold that on one side of the page. I hope you have your, your, your pen and paper as well. So hold that on one side of the page. 
And the reason why I, you know, was led to this scripture um, is because it begins to draw out key lessons and characteristics and principles that we can all take on. And by the grace of Almighty God, as we apply those things, we can then really go back to Proverbs 17, 17, and go back to the two great commands that Jesus Christ himself gives us in terms of loving God and loving people and be able to say, you know what, tick, tick, I'm really conforming to this. There's the need to give some background because to get the, to get the full story of what's going on in 2 Samuel 10, you almost need to read the entire chapter and read it with an, with an eye of understanding of the spirit to be able to get what's going on. I'll give some of the backdrop here. So in, 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 in this, you know, leading up to this conversation between two generals in King David's army was, you know, um, David was friends with, uh, with, 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 with the king of the, of, 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 of the, of the, of the Ammonites or the, or the Arameans. Yeah. He was friends with the king of the Ammonites. Um, the, the king died and his son called um, Hunan became the new king. Right. So David says, you know what? I would express, you know, condolences and show kindness to a friend's son that just, um, you know, that just passed away. So David sends emissaries and they go to, 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 see, um, to see this new king, right? Somewhere in between, you know, the new king, this, you know, those days, there are different ways as king you can show um, disregard. So, you know, it backfired. So the, the, when you read the full, because of time, we won't read it from the beginning. So it backfired and it led to war between Israel on one side and the Ammonites or the Arameans or the Syrians on the other side. Now, I was reading this. Now we get into this exchange of faith and of friendship, of relationship and community between two generals or brothers in King David's army. So I read 2 Samuel 10, 11 to, to 12. So verse 11, now Joab said, if the Arameans are too strong for me, then you are to come to my rescue. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I would come to your rescue. Be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. In this two script, in these two verses of scripture is a very key exchange between two generals right in the middle of adversity, right? They're right in the middle of adversity. And for people that have, you know, just imagine in your mind's eye that the, the, these guys have gone into war, right? And on one side, they're facing the Ammonites that live in a walled city. And behind them, they've got the Arameans or the Syrians that were also attacking. So they're right there sandwiched in the middle. And in this scripture, you begin to see the, the key lessons and characteristics and principles that I believe God is trying to teach us about friendships, partnership, relationship, and community. So there are seven key things that I would want to pull out from this scripture. And I'll go through them kind of one by one. And, you know, we and just, you know, if people have questions, please keep noting this, but we're here to study the Bible and do, read, you know, some deep dive in, into, into the work, right? So the seven principles that I really want to draw from here is this. Humility, unique gifts, focus, helping others, strength, kingdom purpose, and total submission. Heavenly Father, as we go into this phase, open our mind's eye, Lord God. Let us see with an eye of understanding and hear with a, with a mind of comprehension, Lord God, of what your word is saying to us in the mighty name of Jesus. So going into the scripture, the first part of it says, 
if the Arameans are too strong for me, then you are to come to my rescue. For me, the first lesson or the first principle that this draws out is one of humility. And I mean, I know um, Reverend was talking on Sunday about, you know, humility, about being humble as well, where, you know, James 4, 6 tells us that, you know, God resists the proud and he elevates, you know, the humble. He grants them grace. Here is a general in, in, in the army, you know, he's fought many battles. And in this exchange of fate between him and his brother and his partner, he says, if the Arameans are too strong for me, then you are to come to my rescue. I bet you some of us will be like, I don't need anyone. I've arrived. I'm going to go into this battle. I'm going to go all throttle and win it for myself. But right there in the midst of adversity, he says to his partner, to his brother, to his fellow warrior, if the Arameans are too strong for me, then you have to come to my rescue. Are we that kind of person? Can we really ask in our community, I'm facing this challenge, I'm facing the struggle, can you come to my rescue? So the first principle or the first lesson or the first characteristic that I picked out from here to answer that question, in Proverbs 17, 17, is humility. And we cannot, you know, expand on this, you know, uh, too much. But, you know, no one is whole, no one is self-sufficient. We need people. We need each other for life and for kingdom purpose. The task ahead of us, think of the task ahead of us is huge. It's massive. Are we open to asking for help? And are we open to offering help? So this scripture is telling us, this verse or that portion of it is telling us that, you know, you need to be open. We need to be open to help. Humility means being open to being taught. Means being open to being helped. Humility means not resentful of good advice or counsel or even mentorship. And for our relationships with people, whether in our homes, in our, in our families, in our communities, without humility, there can be no unity. Ephesians 4, 1 to 3 talks about the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. If we're to occupy till it comes without unity in spirit and in deed, it is not possible. And you cannot have unity if there's no humility. Praise God. I'll move on to the second principle or, or lesson that I draw from that portion of scripture. And it is about unique gifts. So these two generals are right there in the, in the thick of battle. They're facing fierce and ferocious armies right in front and right behind them. And this guy, Joab is fought many battles and in his humility says, hey, would you help me if this thing overwhelms me? But I know I am a warrior. I know I meant to do something in this, you know, community, in this army, in, you know, I know my gifting. I'm going to, you know, really, you know, you know, lash onto my gifting and do what I'm called to do. But would you help me? So the second principle is unique gifts. We all have, you know, gifts, talents that God has placed in each one of us. I think it's 1 Corinthians 12 that talks about, you know, the variety of gifts in the kingdom. That Those gifts are meant to tack on to specific tasks, specific roles, right? So there's no need for competition if you have that, if we have that understanding and, and a clear revelation of what those gifts are. There should be no need for any unhealthy competition. So whether you're, you know, as a person in, in, the, in your relationship, in your family, in your, you know, community, in your church, uh, in the marketplace, the question is, do you know what gifts you are? Because if you do, then you're focused on 
the adversary that right in front of you, or if you're the one facing them at the back, right behind you, right? So the second principle I picked up from there was unique gifts. The third point is about focus. In verse 11, the second part says, so this is Joab still having this exchange of deep faith with, with his brother. That, you know, just picture uh, a, a battlefront and the enemy in front and the enemy behind. And he says in that moment where, you know, he has his own, um, and, uh, you know, so he's facing the Ammonites in the walled city and Abisha, the brother, is facing the Arameans. Um, sorry, it, Joab is facing the Arameans and Abisha is facing the Ammonites. And he says to him in this very deep exchange of faith, if they overwhelm me, come help me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will come rescue you. I picked up on two key, in that portion were two things that jumped at me. One was focus. I mean, you might say, yes, yeah, yeah, these guys are professional warriors. They fought many battles and all of that. But the real lesson is, is this for us, that when the enemy, and we know that the enemy we're dealing with has come to kill, steal, and destroy. When the enemy, you know, is that widespread and that diverse in all of its different ramifications, whether on the economic side, on the political side, on the social side, we're battling so many forces. It is wise not to engage all resources in one place. So these guys have a very deep, you know, exchange of faith and says, I would focus on what is in front of me. But if I see you struggling, I would come help you. I'll be so focused on what, you know, God has laid for me to do. But if the battle you're dealing with is too strong, I would come help you. And I think Proverbs 17, 17, that is the message there. Are you a brother or a sister in times of adversity? Am I so focused on what I'm doing that I see you struggling and I'm like, no, I can't help you. So I picked up on focus and helping others from that verse 11, praise God. And just as, you know, um, Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians, going back into it, about, you know, we've talked about different gifts and, 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 you know, different callings are every, you know, that, that, that we all have, right? And how it's all about how we deploy those gifts and how we ensure that we help each other and, you know, and, and stay strong in the faith, right? Um, the, 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 the helping others part of it means, you know, because they're so, they're, they're different parts. We all have different roles to play as we focus on the role we're meant to play and execute on it to the best of our ability, we should never lose. We should never lose the, 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 the yearning to help others that might be struggling, right? So we all need each other is really the key message coming out from that part of the scripture, right? And in helping each other, there's a, there, you know, it kind of goes back to the earlier point about humility as well. I'll, I'll try and speed up because of time. It goes back to the second point about, you know, to the first point about humility as well. There's no one more important than the other. We all have different roles and different responsibilities to, to do based on the, the gifts and the talents that, you know, um, that, that God and, and has placed in each one of us. So while First Corinthians 12 talks about different gifts and not one is inferior to the other, some have more gifts than the others. It doesn't make them more superior or inferior. That does not happen. To achieve kingdom purpose, everyone is essential in that, in that battle. I'll try and move along quickly. So it brings me to the question of, you know, who is most important in all of this? You know, when I was preparing for this uh, study and in the interest of time, I'll try and quickly move it along. You know, in, 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 when we think about Proverbs 17, 17 and talk about, you know, uh, a friend loving in all times and 
and, and, and the brother being made for difficult times, you know, and all of what we've heard from, you know, second um, Samuel 10, when you put people together and you have this construct of relationships, partnerships and community, we struggle sometimes with who is more important, what, you know, who is more important in all of this. And in the interest of time, there's a Slido link I would, you know, I, I just thought, you know, it would, it would not be true to form if I don't bring in my own analogy of, 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 a, of, of a car. Um, I think it was Pastor Peter and Pastor Afiz that mentioned um, it was the Maserati and the Ferrari. So um, people, if you can please go on to the Slido link or, or um, use your phone to get the QR code there and see if you can quickly go on to that in the few minutes we have left um, as, you, as I progress with, with tonight's uh, Bible study. Can someone, I can't really see, but can someone give a thumbs up when you're able to uh, join the Slido link? Okay, thank you. Uh, Brother Ty, I see your thumbs up there. Um, hopefully a few more people um, would have gotten um, onto the link. Praise God. Um, so in the interest of time, I'll quickly try and move this along, but I'll leave it on there. And, you know, like I said, um, just on a slight digression and just to, you know, to ensure that um, uh, Pastor Peter and Pastor Afiz don't be like, you know, I, I let the team down. I thought, you know what, let me use a car analogy as well. Yeah, let me use a car analogy just to prove out some points about everyone having a role and a uniqueness that they bring as a person into the relationships, into their partnerships, and into community for kingdom purpose, right? I thought, you know what, I use this analogy. So when you get on the Slido, uh, you can use it to ask your questions, but there's also a poll running there. And the poll is really about, you know, so this slide shows you uh, a picture of a car, right? You know, it could be any car, but because Pastor Afi said, um, no, it was Pastor Peter that mentioned the Ferrari. I thought I put the picture of a Ferrari. And a car on average has 30,000 individual parts, different parts. And my question to, you know, everyone on the call or everyone that can get on the Slido link is what is the most important part of the car? So I, there are three options that I've given in the, in, in the, in the poll. One, is it the battery? Or is it something called the terminal wire? Or is it the engine? So there's a poll on there that please, if you can go on there, just you know, quickly play around with it and I'll see what we get. Praise God. So I believe the poll is going on and I would um would would we'll come back to it later. In the interest of time, let me move it along, right? So we'll come back to it before the end of this of, 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 of tonight. But you know, so let's you know just use this as an illustration to answer the question of which is more important in um in 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 you know in in, in the car. 30,000 different parts. The, the battery represents the heart of the, of the car. The terminal wire serves a function in the car and the engine is the engine, right? So engines can range from, you know, um, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousand. Batteries, maybe 200 to 250 pounds, most likely. Terminal wires, you know, I think the premium ones, nothing more than, you know, Mm, 30 to 40 pounds. But they all serve different roles. So I just see the poll and see what we will come back to this before the end. But just quickly moving it along. The second part of 2 Samuel 10 talked, um, um, it's, now I'm focused on verse 12. It says, Be strong and let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. Be strong. To me, it means that strength is needed in relationships and communities, especially during moments and periods of transition. 
And we've already established that moments and periods of transition bring adversity. So here is a call for you to be able to answer Proverbs 17, 17, the main question it poses to our minds and to our hearts as to being a, a brother or a sister in times of adversity. Are you strong? And I'm, when I'm saying strong, I don't mean just strong physically. Ephesians 6.10 tells about be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Are we putting on the whole armor of God that we might be able to withstand? Praise God. And it is the strength of God's might which, by which we must be strengthened, not just by our own strength. So it's saying to us clearly to answer that question about um, can I stand in times of adversity? Am I strong? And that is the word from Joab to Abisha on, right there on the battlefield. Be strong. May God grant us strength in all areas that we need in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly moving here along. The second part of 12 says, for our people and the cities of our God. Now this is a key fundamental element. You might ask yourself, okay, I am humble. I have unique gifts. I'm executing well. I'm, I'm deploying my giftings well. I'm focused and I'm helping others. And I'm strong. God has strengthened me physically, you know, spiritually and, and all not. But you need to be able to ask yourself, why? Why, when I'm in this relationship, in this partnership, in this community, you need to be clear in your mind's eye. Why? Why am I doing all of this? And if your answer doesn't lead to, I am doing it for kingdom, for God's kingdom, and for the benefit of his people, you really want to rethink what you're doing. So in our aim for humility, in our exercising the differences in our gifts, in our being willing to help each other, in our focusing on what God has given us, in our deploying our strengths, and in all of what we do, you need to ask yourself, why? And if your answer or answers does not point you it to it is for God's kingdom and for the benefit of his people, then you really want to recheck what you're doing. And then you cannot really say, Tick, tick, Proverbs 17, 17. I'm a friend that loves at all times. And or am I a brother that would stand in the time of adversity? Because all you're really doing, all I'm really doing, if that is what I'm doing, is I'm just doing a show for people. I'm just doing it to be liked by people. The answer must point you for God's kingdom and for the benefit of his people. And lastly, Verse 12 says, the Lord will do what is good in his sight. To me, this, you know, I go back to last Sunday's, you know, sermon um, where Pastor talked about, um, you know, humility and, you know, the, the differences between positional humility and, you know, and humility that is of the heart. The second part, this final part of my discussion this night the Lord will do what is good to in his sight. References a total submission to the will of God. A total submission of all of our plans, all of our thoughts, all of our labor, all of what we think and deem to be good at the feet of our God. So to round up tonight's study and fellowship and, and meeting, we should be asking ourselves, are we fully surrendered to God in our relationships? Are we fully surrendered to God in our partnerships? Are we fully surrendered to his will and his majesty and his awesomeness in our community? Because when we can answer that and address all of these other points, about humility, about unique gifts, about focus, about helping out others, about deploying our strengths and doing it all for kingdom purpose, then we can really come back and say, you know what, we've done what, you know, was described by Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 4, 8 to 11, that we've deployed our gifts 
to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Praise God. And finally, let us, you know, be humble. Let us diversify according to our various gifts and let us come to each other's help wherever it is needed. Let us be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And let us spend ourselves, you know, for kingdom purpose and for the benefit of God's people. And finally, when we've done all, let us submit to his will and say, indeed, I am a friend that loves at all times. And I am a brother and a sister that can be called on in times of adversity. Amen. Praise be to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we've come to um, the end of, 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 the, of, of, of tonight's Bible study. I know we're running very short on time. Um, I would like to go back to the poll and see what you know people are saying. I would stop um, um, sharing at, at this point. Uh, bear with me. Praise, praise the Lord. So um, whilst I whilst, whilst I try and get the poll back up, Dickin Show, can you um, also share the details for um, for for offering um, on 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 the on 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 the on the on the on the link? I would quickly go through a few questions here that people have asked. Um, and thanks, uh, thanks, darling, for doing that. Um, yes. Also, the, yes. the poll in the chat just for ease. You, you. Sorry, what did you say? The poll is on the chat, just for ease. Oh, perfect, the, perfect. The, oh, the perfect. Results. Perfect. Thank you. So I'll quickly, um, just trying to bring up the poll. Oh, perfect. You see, this is the kind of this is the answer I expected. Um, about seventy three percent said it's the it's the it's the battery. Uh, uh, sorry, it's the engine, and twenty seven percent battery and terminal wire. Well, I mean, that's kind of what you would think. The engine is. Is the engine? It's the powerhouse of the of the car, but no one see they're all important in their area of function. That is the key thing. Everyone is important in their area of gifting and in their area of purpose. But from a car analogy perspective, I dare say the terminal wire, the cheapest material in those thirty thousand unit parts that make up a car, is the most powerful. Why? Not because it is in competition with the engine or the battery, but because its function is that without the terminal wire, you cannot get power from a battery into the plugs that goes into the engine. So whether your engine is 100,000 or 10,000, without the terminal wire transferring power from the engine, from the battery into the spark plugs, into the engine that makes the car to turn, nothing can happen. And for you know, just in case if there's anyone on the call thinking, oh, you know what, my 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 gift, my talent is, you know, it, it's you, I, I just do this. Don't minimize it. There is a function. There's a task that God is calling you to deploy in this season. Everyone is important. It is about being important and executing your talent and deploying in the area of your gifting to the best of your ability. So if you're the terminal wire, be the best terminal wire. If you're the battery, be the best battery. And if you're the engine, be the best engine, in, you know, by the grace of God. So I'm very mindful of time. There are a few questions here. I'll just quickly, you know, jump into them as well. So um, I think the one that jumps at me is um, this one about mental and um, emotional strength is required to be strong. How do I build this and not break down in adversity? Praise the Lord. So a scripture that jumps to mind for me, and I hope I can share this, it's, um, it's um, Isaiah 11. I, Isaiah 11, obviously, you know, we, we've talked about seeking help, not being, not, not being, you know, I don't want to use the word proud because, you know, but being humble enough to reach out. And I thank you for putting this out on the, on the forum there. But there are people in this community you can reach out to. So where we say, you know what, um, you know, um, the enemy ahead of me, I'm dealing with this emotional and, and mental strength, you know, stress, and I need that to be strong. 
How do I build this and not break down in adversity? There are people you can reach out to. That's why we're placed in this community. That's why we're part of this fellowship. That's why, you know, we have people that you can reach out to. Obviously, if there are specialist help needed, there are even people in the house that can signpost you to where you need to get that help from. But it goes back to the earlier point, you know, and I thank you and I bless God for you for actually raising that. Please feel free, reach out, right? And there's help available, even help, even if it is just to sign post, to pray with you and to do the practical things that can help strengthen you in times of adversity. Isaiah 11 talks about, you know, the, 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 the spirit of excellence, the spirit of strength, of, of strength, right? That is needed, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. And all of that is available to us as well in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, the final question I would take, and apologies, we're, we're running over slightly, is how do you deal with abandonment by friends during adversity? So similar, you know, kind of explanation like the first one. There are a couple of things we've shared tonight about, you know, the different principles and 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 and, and lessons and and stuff, you know, we've talked about the humility, the unique gifts and focus and helping others and strength. Now you also want to be asking yourself, you know, if I have friends that are abandoning me during adversity, what, who are those friends? What kind of friends are they, right? You want, and also you, you the, the first point is also asking of ourselves, what kind of friend am I? So Proverbs 17, 17, when you do a deep reflection on it, is almost a question to you and me as individuals to ask ourselves first, am I operating this way? And by extension, am I, you know, exhibiting the same deep expression of faith that Joab and Abisha were sharing in those two scriptures we shared, right? Are we, you know, so those, again, if the if the if, if the um, if the people around you that you feel you cannot talk to, you have a community here. But it always starts with us practicing these lessons or this, these principles and applying it. And by the grace of God, you know, it would, you know, make everything concerning us right in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. So let me, let me um, because of time, I will need to bring the, the meeting to, an, uh, the, the, this portion of the meeting to, to an end before we go into, into the offering. Uh, Dick and Show, has the offering been shared on, has the details been shared? Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay, I see the, the details have been shared. Awesome, awesome. So thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for tonight's um, fellowship. We thank you for tonight's uh, Bible study. We thank you for your word that has come to us to illuminate our minds and give us, you know, a deeper reflection of who you are, Lord God. We know that all scripture from you is for our benefit and for our purposes to, to develop us as, you know, sound, faith-established Christians, Lord God. We know that all of your word is for our own training, to teach us, to correct us, to instruct us so that we may be fully established as people of righteousness, Lord God. We thank you for tonight's word. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your awesomeness, Lord God. We thank you for the individuals that have asked questions about abandonment, about, you know, challenges in relationship, Lord God. Only you can restore, Lord God. We ask for res restoration to them, Lord God. To anyone, Lord God, that has experienced traumatic relationships with people, with partners, with, in their partnerships, in their community, Lord God. We ask for a restoration and a healing, Lord God. We ask that, Lord God, your spirit of peace, of grace, of calmness, of strength, Lord God, rest and abide with each and every one of us, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to give towards what you're doing in the house, Lord God. For everyone that's, you know, giving in form of offering and tithes, we thank you for them, Lord God. Your, your word goes into, in, in, into our, your word goes into the hearts, Lord. You, you talk to the hearts, Lord God. All of what you, we've shared tonight, Lord God. 
Let it speak to our hearts, Lord God. We just return all praise, all glory, and all adoration to you. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. And can we share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.